Good afternoon, Maplewood and Danbury residents. We are Graham Road Baptist Church, and we gather together here at the church to uh, bring a service to you of sorts. Uh, we're going to sing some hymns. I'll have a short message for us. We'll close in a hymn, and we just want you to know that you are not forgotten. Uh, it's been about two and a half to three months since we've seen you last time. We look forward to getting back with you, but we want you to know you're on our hearts. And we have been praying for you all on a regular basis. Um, so we hope and pray this finds you all well and in good spirits. We look forward to the time when we can get back to you in person. But we hope that uh, you'll enjoy this, this service by this broadcast. So we'll begin with a few hymns. And uh, then I'll bring a brief, brief message from God's Word. And so... Here's Mark to lead us in the singing. Amen. All right. As, uh, as Joe said, I'll echo sentiments. I hope that uh, everybody's doing well. And we try and name the folks that we miss, but I know I would miss somebody, and I wouldn't want you to feel that you were any more, any less important than the next. So we'll just say to each and every one that we're accustomed to seeing, Boy, I can't wait to get back, and yeah. I know those thoughts are, are echoed, those sentiments are echoed by everyone else here. Um, how we usually do our singing, if you'll remember, is we're passed out a book. I can't pass out a book through the, uh, through the waves, I'm sorry. So what we're going to do is we've picked a couple of songs that I think are pretty, pretty common, and we're only going to sing one verse of them. We always sing just a little bit slower than maybe you're accustomed to, so that if you're a little bit slower, you're not quite sure of the words, you have time to sing while we're forming the words ourselves. Um, for those of us that are here in the room, we're going to turn to page 428. And the name of the song is Heavenly Sunlight. We could all use a little bit of sunshine, just a little bit of uh, extra joy. It's been beautiful the past couple of days, the past several weeks actually. But my spirit can use a little sunlight, I think. And, that's what the Lord brings to us. That's the sunlight that we want to receive, and that's the sunlight that we want to help share and spread with you. So we'll go ahead and sing. I think on this one, we'll do the first and the last verse for those that are here, and uh, let's go ahead. Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountains through the deep bay. something special about the person, about the name, we're going to turn in our hymnals to uh, hymn number 42, and hear this one verse song, the title of it is, His Name is Wonderful. And you can take that any way. His name 
is wonderful. It's a wonderful name. Or you can call him wonderful. And both are absolutely 100% true. As I said, this is a one verse song. For those of you that don't know it, we're going to sing it through once. You're welcome to join us. But then we're going to turn around and we're going to sing it through a second time. And hopefully, you will have picked it up and you can join with us where you're at. So we're going to go ahead and sing. His name is wonderful, and it's again, it's a very slow song. So, His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, He is the mighty King, Master of everything. His name is wonderful, Jesus, my Lord, He's the great shepherd. special song. Again, as I always say, this isn't America's Got Talent. These ladies have just put something together to kind of allow us to take a break, gather our thoughts, and focus our minds and our hearts towards what we're about to receive, which is God's Word, and that's what their song is going to direct us to. So ladies, come on up. Really, he said, 
if this were my last day, I'd shout Jesus all the way, if this were my last mile, I'd spend it praising him a while, if I had but one breath, I'd use it to praise him with. For he is really all that matters when this life is over, crossed as cold water, we'll see more clearly, see that really he's in. For he is really all that matters when this life is over, crossed as cold water, we'll see more clearly, see ladies thanks so very much it's always a treat to, to have the the uh, it's not always the younger folks but it's always a treat to allow people to stand at the front and praise the Lord with a gift that they've been given sometimes it's the, the, the gift of a, a, a voice that is just beautiful sometimes it's they're able to play a, a piano or another instrument so thank you very much and it was a really good we're going to sing one more, and I, I believe this one should be familiar to, to a lot of folks. Um, for us, it's number 57, and can it be that I should gain? And I, I think that in the following message, one of the things that uh, Brother, Brother Joe is going to, uh, if he doesn't highlight it, it's going to be a consistent theme throughout his message, is how can, how can the God that is in, in in control of everything that we see that we haven't seen because it's in history past and that we won't see because it's in the future how can that God give such personal attention and care to each one of us one of the one of the uh, the, the um, sayings that, that my pastor has that I just latch on to and it sounds kind of odd, and, and, and it takes you a minute to digest it, but he often says, God doesn't love us all. God loves us each. That means that for each and every one here in this room, and each and every one in your room, if you were, or if I was, or if anyone in here was the only person that had ever walked this planet, God would have loved you no more, no less, no differently, that he does now, and that he loves each and every one of us uniquely and corporately. It's just, it's just amazing. And this God gave everything that he had, everything that he could, to regain the relationship that we destroyed when we fell into sin. So we're going to sing, and can it be, that I should gain. It's, it's for our benefit. He benefits because he enjoys our fellowship, but we gain because we gain his fellowship and we gain life eternal. We're going to sing the verse first, and we're going to sing the first verse. Hopefully these are familiar enough that you can join with us where you're at. So, let's go ahead. And can it be that I should Jesus. 
wonderful. Joe, come and tell us a little bit about that, about that amazing gun. Yes, sir. All right, folks, today I have a message from the book of Isaiah, and we're going to be in chapter 64. I'm going to read a couple of verses from there, but let me just say as we get started here today, when we see such chaos in the world around us, have we ever wondered, where is God when the events around us don't make sense? Well, I want to answer that question for us today and assure you that God is still in control and that he has a plan and a purpose in all that's happening. In the day, um, in the day the, of the prophet Isaiah, his nation Israel was also in chaos. Evil people had looted their cities. Uh, they had burned down their temple. And they are in a chaos much like we are today. I'm just thankful that it's not <laughs> as severe as what they were facing in that day. But nevertheless, they were in chaos too. I want, to, I want you to listen to the words of Isaiah in chapter 64 and his thoughts when he was experiencing all this looting and burning that was going down in his day. He says to the Lord, Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence, as when the melting fire burneth, and fire causes the waters to boil, to make thy name known to thine adversaries, that the nation, nations may tremble at thy presence. Isaiah was praying, asking the Lord, Lord, where are you? Why don't you come down and... <laughs> zap these enemies of yours, of ours. And so um, he had uh, the same emotions that we had, that we have today. And uh, again in, in, verse, in verse 12 of this chapter 64 in Isaiah, he writes, Wilt thou refrain thyself for these things, O Lord? In other words, Lord, will you are you just going to stay back and watch what's going on around us here? Oh Lord, wilt thou hold thy peace and afflict us very sore? Lord, are you going to allow these enemies of ours to afflict us this way? Well, you know, it's easy to point the finger, isn't it? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, the Bible tells us. Yep. And it's easy to point to these that are unruly and doing the things they're doing, but what about us? Mm. Do we deserve uh, a judgment of God? Yes, we do. Mm. Uh, but we are living today in an age of grace. God is being merciful in what he's doing here, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Um, God has a plan. And he's, he's working it out. Um, so where is God when all this is going on? I'm going to give you the answer. God is extending grace towards mankind. Grace. You know what grace is? Grace is unmerited favor, undeserved. We don't deserve, even we, seemingly innocent people amongst all this chaos, we don't deserve right. the good graces of God. Right. He's being merciful to us. In 2 Peter, in chapter 3 and verse 9, the Lord says here, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is being long-suffering to, towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Folks, these trying times are going to put people on both sides of the fence at a point where we're desperate. Lord, and they're going to turn to the Lord. Lord, help us. And that's what we're doing right now. We're, we're asking the Lord to come down and zap these people. But listen, uh, in a sense, we're no better than they are. Right, right. We're all Amen. capable of sin. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But uh, thank God He's given us a, an answer. He's given us a solution. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, He says, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He's not willing that any should perish, and he wants to save as many of us as will be saved. It's a choice. We're given freedom of choice. And so it's up to us to whether we accept or reject God's plan. And so 
in these days, he, he is providing an opportunity for us to call out to him, to pray and ask him. And certainly, when we see the chaos, it does cause us, to, where are we, where's our hope? Our hope's in him. Right, right. And it should cause us to turn to him and pray and ask him for, uh, for salvation, number one. To, to uh, bring an end to all this madness. Well, folks, the Bible unfortunately tells us that days are going to get worse and worse as we reach the end of this age of grace, the church age, we call it. There is coming a day when he will return again, and believe me, he will come at that day right. to bring judgment mm -hmm. to the world. The day that we're looking for right now, but that's not God's plan right now. It's all in God's time. And he gives us the grace, the wherewithal to endure whatever his people are, are facing in life. Any circumstance, trial that we face, God is there for us. Uh, not necessarily to change the circumstance, but to give us the strength and the help we need to get through these times. He's our God. He's our refuge right, and our right. strength, as some of these hymns say. And so um, in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, the word says, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think right. according to the power that worketh in us. God is able, but he's not right now bringing judgment to this world. Again, what is God doing? He's fulfilling his plan. Mm. In Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4, 4 and 5, he says, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons, that we, we might receive the grace of God, the free gift of salvation. And so since the foundation of the world, before the world was, God had a plan. God in His infinite knowledge, almighty knowledge, knew that when he created man in a perfect situation, a sinless man and woman in the world, that sin was going to enter the world. That chaos was going to uh, be the result of sin entering to the world. Mm -hmm. And he, had, he then, before the foundation, before he even created this earth and man and woman in it, he made a plan. Yeah. He made a plan to send a Savior to the world, Jesus Christ. He's called the Word. The Word was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was right, made. Right. And He became flesh and dwelt amongst us, that we may behold His glory. And so, since the foundation of the world, God has had a plan. His plan was to provide a Savior, Jesus Christ for fallen mankind. The first promise in the Bible of this Savior was given to us early on in the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, in chapter 3 and verse 15, where he promised that he would send a Savior, the seed of a woman, that would crush the head of the serpent, yet bruise his heel. Well, that's exactly what happened many years later, many thousands of years later, when Jesus finally was born into this world, born of a virgin. Then came the long wait for the Savior. As, as promised to the prophets of old, he would be born of a virgin in a town called Bethlehem, and it came to pass in God's time. And so we can be sure God is always right on time. Right. But you see, he came for the first time not to judge the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And to just uh, to provide the Savior. He promised to come again, and He will, and at that time, to judge the world. As for now, we live in the age of grace. And I wonder, are you ready for that great day when, he'll, when He will return to judge? Mm -hmm. We have only our lifetime uh, to make that vital decision about what we're going to do with Jesus Christ. Will we accept his plan or reject it? Our eternity uh, is based on that decision. So it's very important, folks, that we realize the 
the solution that God has given sinful mankind. He provided a Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's up to us to make a decision to accept his free gift of forgiveness for sins. That's why we call this the age of grace. Do we deserve to be forgiven? Of course not. But he has provided it. And he is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way. You know, many religions teach that there are many roads to heaven. Folks, that's just a fable. That is just not true. He is the way, the truth, and the life. We must, we must accept God's plan, and his plan is sending his Savior to this world and giving us, he says he's long-suffering, and he certainly is. It's been 2,000 years since he provided a sacrifice in his son. <clears throat> but he is, in his timing, we don't know when. We just have to be vigilant and be doing the things, the right things that we should be doing. We should, number one, accept him as our Lord and Savior and follow his ways as he presents them in the Word of God. So, <clears throat> where is God right now? He's knocking at your heart's door. Mm. Over there in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20, the, the Word says that he knocks at your door. Uh, well, let me read that. All of a sudden, it just... Uh, I'm getting old <laughs> and forgetful. But let me read Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. God's giving you an invitation. He's knocking at your heart's door, perhaps through this message, perhaps through other ways. He, he speaks in many ways to people individually so that you'll definitely know, hear his voice, uh, experience his drawing you into himself that he's knocking at your heart's door all we have to do is accept open that door and let him into your heart folks he will bring peace and and contentment and and salvation to your soul mm. um, you know folks I I don't know about Jane Jane <laughs> God bless you, Jane. Amen. We, we hope you've endured this, mm -hmm. this time. We look forward to seeing all of you. But God has given you many years. And uh, in talking to you in the past, I can sense, I trust, that there was a time in your life when you accepted as your Lord and Savior. That's the all-important decision that we have to make. Romans 6.23, folks, I'm just going to present God's plan to you so that you can make a conscious decision about your eternity. I, 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 I mentioned Jane's name because the last I heard, Jane, you were, I think, 103. Mm -hmm. My goodness. And though you lived 103 years, that's but a moment in God's right, eye. Right. Eternity is a long, long time. There's, there's no end to it. And so this is the most crucial decision that you folks will ever make. Romans 6.23 says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And Ephesians 2.8 and 9 tells us very plainly, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. In our preaching service today, our pastor brought a message uh, talking about this very thing. He says, the only thing that we can bring to the table when we meet Christ <laughs> is our sin. Mm -hmm. No good works will he accept. He wants us to humbly admit that, yes, we are sinners. Right. And we're in need of a Savior. And Lord God, you are that Savior. And it's simply making a conscious decision to accept his plan, his Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, as your Savior. Romans 10.13 10, says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You have God's word on Call on him. Ask him to save you. 
and be sure that he will. Again, this is the day of grace. We're all given freedom of choice to choose or reject God's plan of salvation. God's hand. Folks, when we think of who you're praying to when you pray, you're praying to an almighty God. His hand moves nations and circumstances to bring yeah. people to salvation. God will respond to your call for forgiveness. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What a gift he's presenting to all of us. One day he is coming again, and at that time, he will bring the judgment that many of us are looking for right now. Bring judgment, Lord, zap them. Thank God he is long-suffering with us. And uh, I pray you've made that conscious decision today. He will make everything right one day. He will, he will come back and rule and reign and rule in this world from Jerusalem at David's throne for 1,000 years. Perfect peace in this world. We look forward to that day. My prayer is that you'll be ready for that judgment day. Right. Folks, I hope this message and these hymns and this gathering and this uh, way that we're bringing this message to you has helped you, has given you a, a hope Amen. and a peace. God will bring you peace. We're going to sing one other hymn as we close, and we thank you for this opportunity to meet with you once again. That Jesus that uh, that Joe talked about, where we're, we're, we're we've got two we have, we're going to sing because we're only singing the the first verse of them. Um, but that Jesus that Joe was just talking about, that that powerful, awesome, all all powerful, creative, everything that you can imagine, um, he he bids us to call us. To, he bids us to call him um, our friend. We're going to turn to uh, number 100 for the folks that are in this room. Yeah. And it's uh, the, the the name of the verse or the name of the hymn because you can't read it is what a, what a friend we have in Jesus. And, and again, as, as Joe talks about all the all the stress and all the grief that's going on around us. Um, that can leave us weak. That can leave us heavy burden. Not maybe even because it physically affects us, mm. but because we hear it and it restrains us and it prevents us from doing things that, that we're accustomed to doing, from seeing people we're accustomed to seeing, from carrying on life as we're accustomed to carrying it on. And it, 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 it gives us a burden, but yet Jesus wants us to ask him, to help us carry the burden, right. so we're going to sing. We're going to sing all three, actually, of uh, of number one hundred, and uh, join with us if you can. If not, just close your eyes and reflect on Joe's message. Well, actually, I should say the message Joe brought us from God's Word and uh, the words of this song. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh. Sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. 
that third verse, that last line. Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. My weakness is different from your weakness. Mm -hmm. It's different from your weakness. It's different from your weakness. Your weakness might be loneliness. Your weakness might be health. Your weakness might be fear. Your weakness might be any number of things. But we're admonished. Take it to the Lord in prayer. The next verse reads, are we weak and heavy laden? Do those things that bother us, are they, are they, are they holding us down? The, the, the hymn gives us instruction gotten from Scripture, from the Word of God, as to how to handle that. As we sing this last verse, listen to the words and, and, and find the encouragement and the direction that it's supposed to bring us. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge, take it to the Lord in Rotated 180 degrees. Pastor Robito, will you please close us in prayer? All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time to gather together and uh, sing and worship and hear your word put forth to it. I pray that you would help this to be a blessing to the folks that are in the homes that are able to view this. I pray that you would help them to know that they are cared about and loved. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I think it was good, folks. Thank you.